my name is Janine and I'm the children's pastor here at All Saints Church in Linfield. Can we all say a big hello to our friend Brenda? Well hello everyone! Hi Brenda, how are you? I'm very well thank you Janine, how are you? I'm good, thanks very much. Could we start with a song today do you think? What a good idea. Everyone at home, can you stand up, find a space, and let's get ready to sing and praise our great God. Hello, hello. We're going to sing a song about Jesus. Do you know who Jesus is? He's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the Son of God, and we're going to praise him as we sing this song together. He's the King of Kings, He's the Lord of Lords, He can heal the sick, He can calm the storm, He's the Son of God, He can save us from sin, and He calls us to follow Him. You know what, I actually think this song would be better if we had someone playing piano and maybe singing along with us. So, hey Philip, hey. why don't you join us? Love to. Oh, I should probably move over. Uh, yeah, just a little bit more. Some more room? Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Thanks. Shall we sing? One, two, three, four. Well done, everybody. That was some great singing and dancing. Okay, is everybody sat back down and ready to listen? Great. Now, Brenda, can you remember what did we learn about last week? Oh, well, we know that Jesus is risen and he's alive. And he showed himself to two of his followers on the road to Emmaus. Brilliant, it's really good remembering. So we know that Jesus showed himself to two of his followers on the road to Emmaus, but Jesus didn't let them see who he truly was. Now, Brenda, do you remember what Jesus spoke to his followers about? Hmm. Oh, I think it was something about going to McDonald's. McDonald's. No, Jesus wasn't talking to his followers about that. Do you remember? It was incredible because Jesus went through the scriptures. That's what we have in our Old Testament. And he was talking about every time that God had made promises and how he had fulfilled his promises. How Jesus was the rescuer that was coming to save 
everybody. It was amazing. Oh, yes, I remember now. And then they ran and told the other disciples what he had told them. And then Jesus appeared at that time as well. Brilliant, that's absolutely right. Now, everyone at home, remember who the disciples were. They were followers of Jesus. They had been with him throughout his life when he was performing these amazing miracles that only God could do. Brenda, can you look some of the miracles that we have learned about what Jesus was able to do? Ooh, let me think. Mm, well, he fed the 5,000. Yep. He walked on water. Yep. He healed a paralyzed man. Yep. He brought people back to life. Well, definitely. He made people better. Mm -hmm. And he calmed the storm. Brilliant. That's right. And there were just a few things that Jesus did while he was alive on earth. You see, the disciples actually saw Jesus do these incredible things that only God could do. And as we go into the video today, I want you to remember that particular thing, that these disciples had seen what Jesus could do. And we're going to meet one of his disciples called Thomas and see how he reacted when he heard that Jesus was alive. All right, all right, gang. Now, after this video, it isn't going to be me and Brenda teaching you. It's going to be our friend, Will. Isn't it exciting, Brenda? That's so exciting. Great. So we will see you once Will has spoken to you. All right, gang, we'll see you in a few minutes. Stories of the Bible. Jesus appears to Thomas. This is Jesus. hey -o! Who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. But some people did not like what Jesus was doing and they put him to death. He died on a cross and was buried in a tomb. For three days, Jesus' body laid in that tomb and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body, found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! For he was risen. He was alive. What? Hey ah! Jesus appeared to his disciples to show them that he was alive. One of the 12 disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus came. Hey, hey, Thomas! Later, the disciples told Thomas, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas said, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. Put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, the disciples were together again. And this time, Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Oh, hey guys. Peace be with you, he said. Then Jesus said to Thomas, put your finger here and look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound in my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Hi. I wonder if you've ever been told something that you didn't believe was true or that you weren't sure at first whether it was true. I want to tell you a story about when I was told something that I wasn't sure whether it was true. Now, I used to be a teacher in a school uh, in London, and one afternoon I was helping out doing running club with some of the students. Now, we went out for a run, my friend, the other, the other two teachers and the students, 
And one of the students, unfortunately, she ran into a bush and she cut her face a little bit. So what we did is I took her back to school to see the school nurse and my friends and the other students, they carried on running and they came back later. And when they came back later, they said, Will, you'll never guess what happened when we were at running club. And I said, what? And they said, well, we were running down the road and a car pulled up alongside us and it had all blacked out windows. And you'll never guess who came out of the car. And I said, who? And they said, well, this man just here came out of the car. I wonder if you know who this man is. Maybe your parents do. This man is the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. At the time, he was the Mayor of London. He got out and he met my friends and he started talking to all of the students that were there at a running club. And I could not believe it. I didn't know whether it was true or not because Boris Johnson is quite a famous person. I couldn't believe that he had been and seen my friends uh, when they were out running and he hadn't seen me. I didn't know whether to believe them. Well, Thomas, in the passage that we've just seen, has a similar problem. Only the person he doesn't see the first time is far more important than Boris Johnson. The day that Jesus rose from the dead, he saw all of his disciples in a room together. Well, all of his disciples, except for Thomas. And the disciples were really excited. And they told Thomas what had happened. They said, we have seen Jesus. He is no longer dead. And Thomas said, I don't believe you. Even though Thomas has seen all that Jesus had done, he was one of his disciples. He says, I don't believe you unless... I can see the holes in Jesus's hands and the piercings on his side where he was stabbed on the cross. I will not believe because people don't come back from the dead. That's not something that happens. Well, a week later, the disciples with Thomas were all in a room together. And just like before, Jesus, he rose uh, after he'd risen from the dead he appeared to the disciples and to Thomas and he said to Thomas look come and put your finger and the hole in my hand in the piercing in my sight and Thomas said to him my Lord and my God you see the thing that Thomas had seen is the first thing I want us to see which is that Jesus lived after he died. Jesus lived after he died. People don't usually do that, but Jesus had risen from the dead. But why had Jesus risen from the dead? Well, John, who's one of the disciples who wrote this account of what happened to Jesus, tells us in the next few verses, he says this in the Bible. He says, these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Second thing I want us to see is that believers live after they die. Believers in Jesus live after they die. And so the question for us is, do we believe that Jesus rose from the dead do we trust in him because if we do the bible promises that we can have eternal life knowing god now and forever so if you think back to that story at the start i don't know whether my friends saw boris johnson or not i hope that they did but i don't know but imagine um if the next week i'd have been out running and I'd have seen Boris Johnson as well. And he said, yes, I did see them. Well, we can see in the Bible that Jesus appeared to his disciples and to even those who didn't believe. So the question for me and the question for you is, do we believe that Jesus rose from the dead? And if we do, 
then we will get life after we die. Oh, it's so great when Will comes to talk to us, isn't it? Yes, we love Will. Do you know, I think that maybe I'd be a bit like Thomas because, well, it's hard to believe in things you can't see. Yes, I can see why you think that. But actually, you do it all the time, Brenda. I wonder, have you ever thought about air? Thought about mm -hmm. air? Not really, no. Not really. You see, you can't see the air around us. You can see what it does. So you can see the tree swaying, can't you? And that's the air moving through the trees. And we breathe in and we breathe out. So that's air moving around our system. But you see, we can't see it. But we trust that it's there. We trust that we can keep breathing, don't we? And so we're believing in something that we can't see, but we know is there. And that's also a bit like gravity. Why do we not float up into space? Well, because gravity pulls us down to the ground. Now, we believe it's there, but we can't see gravity. And that's the same as what it's like to follow Jesus. See, let me pick up the Bible. Remember, the Bible is God's word. It's how he speaks to us. And the part of John that Will was just reading to us right at the end of this section so in chapter 20 and verse 29 jesus says to thomas because you have seen me you have believed blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed you see jesus wants us to believe in him even though we can't see him and later on in the Bible, in a book called 2 Corinthians, which is a letter written by Paul, Paul writes this, he says, For we live by faith and not by sight. So I'm going to read that to you again. We live by faith and not by sight. You see, Jesus was telling his disciples and he calls us all to trust him. And when we trust him, Brenda, what happens? Well, it means that we get to live with him after we die. That's right. That's what Will was teaching us today, wasn't he? You see, we have the Bible to learn all about who our God is, who Jesus is, and who the Holy Spirit is all together as one. And if we trust that the Bible is true, then we have faith that it is true and we get to be with Jesus forever. And that is good news. So I think we should take this time to pray. So before we pray today, um, I want to remind you of a catchphrase that we learnt a few weeks ago. Now, everyone at home and Brenda, I'm going to say church is, and you're going to shout back, family. So let's practice that now. Church is? Family! Very good. I think you can do it a bit louder though. Okay, everyone, let's try one more time. Church is family. Much better. Well done. Now, the reason I want to remind you of that catchphrase is that if church is family, it means we have brothers and sisters all around the world who are trusting and following Jesus. And today in our prayers, we're going to pray for one of our sisters who needs our prayer. And her name is Rihanna. And she's seeing some really special doctors this week. So during our prayers, we're going to pray for healing and protection on her. And we're going to pray for her family. All right, gang, let's see your wiggly fingers. Oh, very good. Washing machine hands. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Bible. We thank you that throughout the whole Bible, it points towards a rescue plan and towards Jesus as a rescuer. And Lord, as we think of Thomas today, who needed to see proof of who Jesus was, Lord, we know that we're all like that sometimes. Help us to have faith. Help us to trust and know that your word is true. And Heavenly Father, we pray for Rihanna. Lord, we pray for her surgery. We pray that it goes really, really well. And Lord, be with her family. 
and protect them, watch over them. Lord, may they lean on you and feel encouraged by you. And Lord, as we prepare to be going back to school this week, please be with each and every one of us. Help us to show that Jesus loves us and we should love each other. Help us to show kindness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. I agree, amen. Well done, everybody. Well, that's it for today, but let's have some notices before you go. Now, if you are in year three, all the way through to year nine, you might want to join us in May half term for our camp. It's called Explore 814. And for all the information that you need, please check out All Saints News, um, which you can find on the websites or on our Facebook pages. Remember, we'll be back in church next week at three o'clock. So if you can come, make sure you book on nice and early and we'd love to see you there. Oh, now, Janine, do you think we could finish with a song today? Absolutely. And so the next song is all about how Jesus can help us to open our eyes and see who he really is. So you might want to snuggle up. You might want to jump up and down. But until next time, it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from Brenda. Goodbye. Relentless Church. Wherever you are, I need you to put your hands on it like this. Come on. Yep. Everybody clap like this, y'all. Like this, y'all. We want to see you. Yeah, no. So open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Just open the eyes of my heart cause I want to see you say I want to see you just open the eyes of my heart Lord open the eyes of my heart cause I want to see you that's our heart today I want to see Wherever you are, let's raise it together. Come on, say it. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. Come on, if you want to see him in the midst of the noise, in the midst of the chaos. I want to see. Come on, just ask him today. Oh, 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 say open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see it like you see. Open the eyes of my heart. I want Let's go. Desire God, we just want you and only you all over the world. Let's sing it together. Say, open the eyes. We want your perspective, God. Give us your perspective. Oh, I want to see you. For my family, I need to see you. For my business, God, I need to see you. Come on. Say, open the Pull out 
So open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Just open the eyes of my heart. Cause I need, like never before, oh, I need to see you. Our prayer today is that you would open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, cause I want to see you. Stay right there. I want to see you. Come on in your homes, tell them. I want to see you. The hope of glory. I want to see you. Jehovah Jireh. I want to see you. Come on, talk to him. Say, I want to see, I want to see you. you're what we want, oh God, and I, I want to see, see you. Say, I want to see, I wanna see you. you. Give us your eyes today, God. Give us your view today. Give us your perspective today. Help us to see through your lens today, oh God. Help us to see that everything gonna be alright and I wanna see you I wanna, I wanna see you. oh God say I wanna see you lift those hands right here say I wanna see you 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 I w